Uh, I'm Dave Schneider. I uh, built a small ROV, remotely operated underwater vehicle. After it passed the trash can, the uh, immersed in a trash can full of water test, I was, of course, anxious to try it. I wish I could say I had some friends with these beautiful swimming pools, but I, I don't have any. So I, I went to a local lake. Uh, it's called Jordan Lake not being a scuba diver, I hadn't fully appreciated that the visibility in this lake was about eight inches. Um, so I ended up taking these images you see here that, uh, that just show the dock supports. We see some uh, fascinating algae here, I guess. I didn't have any leaks and the whole thing basically worked. So at that point, I, I went searching for a, a better place to, to try it out. So for a better test, um, I found a, a really neat spot, which was a, a rock quarry that had been abandoned many years ago. I'm not sure when. It's now used by something called the Piedmont Dive Rescue Association to, to train, I guess, rescue divers. It, it was perfect. The water was warm. You could get in it if you wanted. The visibility was super. It must have been 20 or 30 feet. And they conveniently stocked the place with a bunch of uh, attractive little fish. Um, and here I'm, I'm just basically trying to see how the thing maneuvers, um, get a sense of how good the video is. There are a few of the fish. I have no idea why there's so much noise in the image. Uh, we didn't see that before, and uh, I'm still a bit flummoxed by why that should be. The little shelf of those rocks that you see, I didn't near test the depth of this quarry, which must be 60 feet or something like that. I just want a, a few feet down for testing. I want to be a little ginger with it in the first outing. The ROV is uh, adjusted. I adjusted it so that it is neutrally buoyant. Um, the reason we're, we're, we're rolling inverted here is, is I needed to take off some weight on the bottom to adjust the buoyancy. There's no neutrally buoyant cable. It's just it's a yellow extension cord, essentially, or, or that and a Cat5 cable. So what you see at this moment is the, the umbilical cable being supported at intervals by uh, bits of uh, foam pipe insulation. Uh, here's a, I'm going to launch it from a different position on the dock and go investigate some of the uh, things that these guys have, have put into the quarry just to make diving interesting there. If you squint, you can see at the bottom of the screen uh, what is a DC-8 cockpit. I was trying to get a little closer to it, but the, the umbilical had, uh, I think, too much flotation. The little ROV has three thrusters. Two are outboard, and they're used for going forward, back, and rotating, I mean, turning left and right. To change depth, you have a, a, th a third vertical thruster and you just apply power up or down. And it, so I'm guessing, you know, I got maybe 10 feet down. I was putting a lot of uh, energy into that vertical thruster, and I thought, well, let's not push this too hard. Uh, I'm not a scuba diver, but there are a lot of divers who go out uh, off the coast of my home state of North Carolina to visit the wrecks there. And I'd love to take it out there. I have to do a little bit more logistical work because the sub would have to take its power source with it. I'd either have to strap on batteries uh, to the sub itself or, or have a, a battery station that went down with the sub. But here I'm mostly just trying to catch, catch some good views of fish. For IEEE Spectrum, this is David Schneider.